Welcome to Chopstick Travel, I'm Luke Martin, and today I'm in East Malaysia, Sabah, on the world's third largest island of Borneo. This place is famous for its wildlife, so today's plan is to experience and get up and close and personal with the wildlife of Borneo. Also, I'm gonna be taking you for some incredible seafood. I'm in the town of Sandakan on the eastern coast of Sabah. It's gonna be a great episode, so make sure you stay tuned until the end. Let's go eat some Malaysian food. So this is Labuk Bay. It's the spot to see proboscis monkeys, which are one of the most famous animals here in Borneo to see. They're famous for their big, huge, fat noses. And these monkeys here at Labuk Bay are wild proboscis monkeys. So it's not the same as the orangutan center because those ones were being rehabilitated. So you can see them jumping in the trees behind me. They are seriously naughty and bigger than you would expect and kind of scary because they're not afraid of humans at all they're slamming their hands on the ground and on the roof of the little building here and jumping all around in the trees they do feed them at 9 30 so you can come and uh, get a close look and get some really good pictures of them around 9 30 but man these things are just absolutely beautiful they have a beautiful kind of orange coat with uh, these big fat bulbous noses and like I said they're not scared of humans so they'll come right up to you. I thought for a second there one of them was gonna jump on my back. <laughs> That was absolutely incredible. I'd have to say it was more exciting than the orangutans and you should definitely check out Labok Bay because I think it's a lot more underrated than the orangutans. But to say that was a close encounter is an understatement. I was literally almost assaulted by a proboscis monkey and they're wild too, which makes it even more exciting. This is actually mangrove forest here so it's high tide the salt water comes in and then at nighttime they actually go to the water's edge and sleep there because then the predators can only attack from one side because the other side is the water and after they finish eating they really settle down for a siesta and take a little nap so things quieted down pretty quickly so try to make it for 9 30 feeding time if you can One sort of unique thing you can find here in Sabah is these water villages. They're built on stilts over top of the water. This one I'm at now is a lot more modern than the one I visited in the last episode, but very authentic at the same time and really just unique to see these buildings built on stilts. People really living here. Uh, this is just their way of life, their preferred way of life out on top of the water. Easy access to the water for fishing and a uh, really traditional lifestyle. I love these little pathways. Just a quick stop here at this water village and as you can imagine, the most likely thing to do next is to go and eat some seafood. So just near the village here is a place serving ikan bakar grilled fish. Okay, well, let's try the belay. Okay. How do you say belay? Belays. Belays. Yeah. Sir, can you please take the sir?
cooked on charcoal, of course, super smoky, I can smell it. And what really is gonna make this dish amazing is that beautiful sambal that they're using. That looks so good, I can't wait to try it. They also have this buffet of all kinds of different vegetables. You can pick a couple to try with your uh, fish and they all look really good. I've got an ikan bakar feast here, which literally translates to burnt fish. So it's just grilled seafood. So starting off with this big guy right here, big fish, I've actually got two different kinds. And then you can see they're both just smothered in that beautiful red sambal sauce. Over here I've got a squid, which has been cut up into little pieces. It looks like it's also been marinated, maybe some turmeric. Tons of veggies here. This one's a fern with uh, some bean sprouts, some fried fritters. Back here I've got tempeh with what looks like chicken liver, I believe. This is a special type of seaweed with uh, some onions. This one is coconut milk with pieces of pumpkin. This is a nice spicy looking oily eggplant. And then some cassava leaves back here in coconut milk once again. And then to drink, I've got myself beautiful coconut. And they even brought me over some uh, grilled chicken with the sambal. So much food, I'm ready to dig in. So traditionally you would eat ikan bakar with your fingers, but uh, I've been provided with uh, some fork and spoon, so I'm just gonna go in with that. Transfer this onto my rice. There is a lot of sambal in there. I don't know if it's gonna be super spicy or what. Let's try it out. Mm. Nope, not too spicy. I can taste some coconut in that sambal, I believe. And it's got a little bit of a, a taste of shrimp paste as well. Really smoky fish, but I can taste a little bit of a bitterness, I think, from that grill. A little bit maybe burnt. This is kind of unique. I don't know if you can tell, but the seaweed has like a translucent appearance. Really interesting. I've never tried this one before. Try it with a little bit of fish. Mmm. Wow. I thought that it was gonna burst, but it's actually a little bit crunchy and almost like uh, crispy and dense. It's not like as juicy as the sea grapes that I've tried before. And again, I get a little bit of a bitterness. I don't know if it's from their sambal or just because the fish has been grilled a little bit too much. Ikan bakar is not strictly fish. So I've also got squid here chopped into small pieces. Same sambal as the ikan bakar, the fish. That is good. I think the fish has been a little bit burnt more than I would prefer. That squid has no bitter flavor whatsoever. It's perfectly cooked and not too chewy. You can really taste the sambal in that one. It's not as spicy as it looks. It's actually got a little bit of a sweetness to kind of balance it out. Pumpkin with coconut milk. Let's try some of that. Put it on my rice. That looks awesome. Really nice and refreshing. That pumpkin just completely melts in your mouth. So this fish is different than the ikan balais, which I just tried. This is a bigger fish, I'm not sure of the name. Same sambal, just a different type of fish. But they've also given me some of this lime chili, which the owner just recommended to me, so go generous with that. That looks really good. Mm. Oh. You gotta have it with that. Oh man, that is amazing. I love the chili sauce here in Saba. They add quite a bit of lime in it, so it's got this sour kick to it. Lots of garlic in there, and it brings the heat level up 10 times. Whew, that's spicy. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Wow, delicious grilled fish in this kind of like a warehouse here. Awesome stuff. All right, time for some more wildlife. This time I've come to the Bornean Sun Bear 
conservation center. So this is another rehabilitation center for the world's smallest bear, the Bornean sun bear. Just checking out the Bornean sun bears. As I mentioned, they're the smallest bears in the world. They're actually a lot smaller than I was expecting. They're like the size of a, a dog, really. Maybe a little bit bigger. And they have this white crest patch on their chest that is their identifying mark. These guys are all rescues, so apparently uh, there was a hunting industry where they would harvest their gallbladder, uh, among other things, and sometimes they would have their cub and they would uh, keep the cub and raise it as a pet. So now they've all been brought here, they're uh, taken care of here, and if they're suitable to be released into the wild, they will be. So it's uh, not the same as the orangutans. They don't feed them at a certain time. It's kind of just random. So you have to kind of get a little bit lucky to see them. But luckily for us, we were able to see a couple. And actually you guys can check out the website. I'll leave a little link down below and you can even volunteer here at this center, which would be really cool. You know, this is a food channel, but I have to admit that uh, you don't come to Borneo necessarily for the food, but there is some good food. You come here for this experience, the wildlife, getting up close and personal and learning about these incredible animals and how uh, we are conserving them and helping their population numbers grow. And uh, what they're doing here at the Borneo Sun Bear Conservation Center is amazing. They've released uh, lots of bears over the years back into the wild and the ones that are not able to get released they're able to live out their lives happily and healthy here and you get to view them in a very natural environment. If you are going to eat good food here in Sandakan, it's most likely going to be seafood. So I've come to a restaurant called Empire Seafood. I've ordered a couple different dishes. Two of them have already arrived. And this is like a Chinese uh, seafood restaurant. This kind of reminds me of a Hong Kong Cantonese style dish. So I've got these fried noodles on the bottom here, topped with this sauce with prawns. There's some green onions. And that looks really interesting. I've never had a dish that looked quite like that. And then over here, this is uh, clams, stir fried with ginger, and those are big clams. They look almost like the ones that I had on my trip to Kundasang in Tuaron. But let me start by just trying some of this before those noodles go too soggy. Try to get one of those prawns. The seafood here has just been so fresh. Everything I've tried has been ridiculously fresh. Let me try this with some of the noodles. Oh wow. It's a really kind of slimy sauce that's on those noodles. Some of them have become saturated, but there are others, uh, the little ends have remained nice and crunchy. And then, of course, super fresh brawn, really meaty, juicy guy. Let me try one of these now. Stir fried with ginger. Those are just absolutely massive clams. Oh, I think I got a double. Oh, yeah. There's more seafood coming. Thank you. Nice ginger aroma with those clams. Really plump, juicy guys. And then classic dish of sweet and sour fried chicken. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's not fried chicken. It's sweet and sour fish. Pieces of uh, tomatoes in there and big chunks of fried fish. Just try it like this. You know, I feel like the sweet and sour dish has been kind of ruined by the West in some ways because you'll eat this really sloppy, sweet, overly sweet 
soggy fried uh, chicken or fish or whatever it is in the West. But here uh, in Asia, they're still doing this dish really well. And it is an authentic Chinese recipe, especially Cantonese. I think this restaurant must have some Cantonese roots. Awesome seafood to end the day here at Seneca. Everything's good. The sweet and sour fish is a little bit uh, not sour enough for my liking, but to be honest, this is gonna be my favorite dish. These noodles have an incredible flavor of ginger, and this actually might be the best restaurant that I've eaten at in Seneca. Mm. I love the contrast between the crispy bits and then the soggy, saturated uh, noodles and the sauce has also got a nice flavor of ginger. Yeah, this is a good restaurant. I definitely recommend if you're gonna probably visit one restaurant on the ground, I'd probably recommend this one, the Empire Seafood. So it just so happens the owner here at Empire Seafood is a Chopstick Travel fan, which is amazing. So he wanted me to try a couple more things on the menu. So he brought out two more dishes. This is really unique. See that? That's a little crab claw poking out. So they de-shell it, they mix the meat with a little bit of prawn meat bread it and then deep fry it. And it's like a little crab claw lollipop. I've never seen that before. And then this is like a jellyfish salad. He said it's a little bit spicy. I see some onions in there, some chilies, but I gotta go in for this crab claw. Look at that. It's literally like a little lollipop. That's so cool. Let's try. Mm. Mm. Oh. That is awesome. That's like Kentucky Fried Crab Claws <laughs> with lots of plump, uh, juicy prawn meat in there as well as the crab meat. It's also, I think, some veggies in there as well. And it's not like super crispy on the outside, but it's got a nice uh, deep fried greasiness, which I actually love. Mm. Oh, that's such a cool dish. Can you just hold on to it like that? Your fingers don't get oily? Yeah. Jellyfish salad, now this is something interesting. I think uh, we should really be eating more jellyfish, so the key is to prepare it. And the reason I say we should be eating more is because as we overfish the seas and deplete the oceans of all of our resources, these guys will be taking over and there'll be plenty of these, but the problem is that they don't really taste good unless you know how to cook them, so let's try this out. Mm. It really reminds me of uh, Thai food. The flavor with a little bit of spiciness and a little bit of sourness, some ginger in there as well. And the texture of the jellyfish is unique. It's kind of crunchy. It reminds me of like a uh, Thai papaya salad or uh, like som pam or yum, like uh, glass noodles. It's really interesting, it's almost like a noodle. Definitely try out the crab lollipop if you come to Empire Seafood. Uh, the owner said a really good point. If you don't like to eat uh, crab with all the mess, then this dish is perfect because, uh, yeah, you don't get your hands dirty at all eating it. If there's one restaurant you're gonna try on your trip to Sandakan or Sepalak, it should be Empire Seafood. That was the best food I had here, uh, hands down, bar none, for sure. And, you know, you don't come here for the seafood, you come here for the wildlife, and today we really got to experience some incredible encounters, especially with those uh, proboscis monkeys this morning. Such a cool experience, once in a lifetime experience. So make sure if you haven't already, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified, and I'll see you guys on the next episode of Chopstick Travel. Bye-bye.